Okay, next I'm gonna talk about how I use the Sonox EQ, my projects. Um, this is pretty much uh, my go-to EQ. It's a really clean sounding EQ. It's surgical, there's, it doesn't add, add any color. And it's just, uh, it does exactly what you want. If there's, if there's some frequencies you wanna, wanna take out or you wanna boost, it's, it, it does a great job. Um, in this project, um, I'll just run through and show you a couple places that I'm using the EQ. Um, first of all, I've got it on, on the vocals. Um, depending on how the vocals recorded, um, I always use a bit of EQ. Now, I didn't record this vocal, so there's, there's been obvious EQing done on it already. But I found for the mix I was doing, it had a little bit uh, too much in the low end. So I've done some rolling off on the bottom. Pretty extreme, actually. Um, I've rolled it off around 200 hertz here. I'll let you hear it. Cause everything you see you call untrue Take a look at all the things you've got It was a bit bass heavy uh, Nothing ever seems to hit The vocal was a bit bass heavy um, for this mix um, It was competing with some other things in the low end So by rolling it off with a filter I have it set at about 18 and at about Around 200 hertz, it sounded good. Get the vocal to sit just a little bit better in the mix. I'll let you hear it. After the main part of the track comes in, I'll let you hear it there. Take a look at all the things you've got. Nothing ever seems to hit the spot. And as you see, the, the track is very, it's a very bass-led track. So the hook is, is the bass line, so I wanted to take a little bit of that, that uh, low end out of the vocal. And I always go, for, for doing something like this, I always go to the, the Sonox EQ because the filters are just really clean. They sound very, very precise. And you can really hone in and, and hit the exact frequency where you want to, um, to, where you want to cut off from. Um, another way that I'm using EQ, let me find some other instances in here. Okay, my main bass sounds again. Again, I'm using the high pass filter to roll off some of the really low frequencies below about uh, 70 hertz uh, because I have a sub bass that's sitting underneath of this um, that's taking up that, that frequency space. So I've rolled that off there. And I've brought out a bit, of, a, a bit of the attack on the bass so you can hear the top of it with a high shelf. Just a maybe one decibel of high shelf here. sit a little bit better on top of the track. And I'll show you some of the instances I've used on the drums with the EQ. Here we have a mid kick. And I've used this to roll off the really low frequencies again. I didn't want any of the, the really sub-bass frequencies in this kick to roll those off using Sonar. Okay, and these, this uh, tom loop that I've, I have in here, I've used a lot of uh, EQ on this to really get it to how I wanted to sound. I'll let you hear how it sounds without any of uh, the plugins on it. And 
and I did quite a lot of shaping on this because I wanted it to sound more up front and I didn't want everything in there to, to be heard so I, I just wanted certain frequency ranges to pop out on that loop because it's just one aspect of the drum track and to do that as you see I rolled off the bass frequencies around 70 hertz there and I've done some boosting around 2k to really bring out those high mids and really bring that uh, tom sound up and in your face and I've rolled off a little bit of the high end to get, it, to get rid of the very top because it's more the mid highs that I'm going for there with that sound. It fills in that part of the drum track. And again, this is without the EQ. And you can hear how it's really shaped the sound in very natural. It didn't really add a lot to the sound. It just did it very clean and uh, precise. 